Good afternoon. My name is Rei Tsuchiyama, your host for the very highly successful and widely watched Business in Hawaii. This is yet another episode of this series that analyzes, investigates, and delves into issues about business, taxes, finance, and how to really get ahead in this world of, of business in Hawaii. We have today the founder of the show, Reg Baker. He and I have known each other for a long, long time. And he now resides in Las Vegas, Nevada. And he's come into the studio today to give his insights and updates on a topic that I think everybody is very interested in, taxes. Welcome to the show, Reg. It's great to be back, Ray. It's always nice to be here in Hawaii, although I wish it was a little bit warmer because after snowing in Vegas, I was hoping to come by and uh, thaw out a little bit, but it didn't quite work out. That's correct. Uh, we've had a very cool and rainy winter, and uh, I, I hope it's going to break because the tourists may not be enjoying it that much. For, uh, and uh, for and I leave on Friday, so oh, no. that's probably when it's going to start warming <laughs> up, but that's all right. I'll have to come back again. Well, this is 2019, and we're going to be discussing tax year 2018. That's what we're doing uh, this several months of the new year of 2019. And we had a lot of hoopla, a lot of uh, new things happen, new legislation happening in the year 2018, and, and it's affecting how we file taxes this year. So you've been watching the returns, uh, watching you know, uh, filings, uh, any general things? What, what's been happening out there? Well, you know, there has been a, a lot of hoopla and a lot of noise. Uh, and I've been, because of my role with the Small Business Administration, been watching this tax legislation as it was developing okay. um, in 2017. And, of course, it, it got launched in December 2017, affecting 2018 tax returns. And so now we're seeing the effect mm. of that. Uh, and there's a, an awful lot of positive things. There's a few people that might get squeezed, but, but the majority of the people are going to see savings. Okay. And, you know, some of the noise that I've been hearing, and I think a lot of people have been hearing, uh, is that the tax refunds, you know, there's no tax break here. That's I'm, right. I'm, it's, know, it's lower. That's what uh, they're saying. Uh, refunds are lower. That's and, right. That's the... That's the uh, media hoopla that's, earlier in 2019. That's the spin that the okay. media is, is putting on things, which is really bogus. Hmm. Um, you know, back in early 2018, the IRS came out with new payroll tax tables. Okay. And those payroll tax tables that all companies have to use when right. they process their payroll brought the rates way down. Right. Oh. And the taxes being withheld out of everybody's paycheck was way down. Right. Everybody saw yeah. a little, some more than others, bump in their paycheck. And they liked it. They liked back, it. Back then. They liked it. <laughs> yeah, back then. That's the refund. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, they were getting okay. the money okay. through the entire year. Right. So they were paying in less taxes, okay. therefore their refund will be less when they file their tax return. Now, have you seen evidence that this is true, the IRS? Uh, True in what sense? Oh, that, that, that there's been uh, 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 higher refunds happening uh, uh, recently also. Well, things have turned around. The first three weeks of the tax season were lower refunds right. because most of the people that file first right. are the ones that are the lower income, oh, okay. that are on the paychecks, right. that, that need that money. It's easier to file. They want to get yeah. it quick. Right, right, right. Yeah, you know, and so those that's usually where the big refunds are in the first part of the year. But now because rates have dropped and they were getting the money during the year, the refunds are smaller. But now that those first three weeks are over, the fourth week is kicking in and beyond, uh, now all of a sudden the rates are going to start popping up because right. now we're talking about a different group of people right, that right. have you know different right. tax uh, right. implications like K-1s and partnerships and businesses. Right. Uh, and now all of a sudden... According to USA Today, right. which I shared with you before the show, um, USA Today just came out and said that in the fourth week, 
tax refunds are right. now bigger right. than they were last year. But like you said earlier in the show, that there is a simple reason for all this that goes back to the uh, withholdings yes. of last year. That's exactly right. And there was a lot of recommendations from the IRS, uh, from CPAs, from other organizations uh, that take a look at your withholdings, mm. make sure that you're withholding enough because right. you are going to be getting a bigger paycheck. And if that doesn't work for you, you got to fix it before the end of the year. Uh, right. They were very much ignored. <laughs> and so now okay. people are saying, well, my refund is so small. Right. Well, yeah, you were getting it during the year instead of the end of the year. Well, okay, moving on from uh, the refunds, are there any other areas that people have encountered some issues? You know, those early filers um, have encountered, and their preparers mm. have encountered, some challenges because the Internal Revenue Service, through Congress, Congress passed a law, Internal Revenue Service is trying to live with it, which got a lot more difficult when they had the government shut down because they lost a few weeks there. Oh, right, right, right. Um, and so they weren't able to keep up right. with what they were trying to do. But the bottom line is that the software that is used to prepare the tax returns, right. the IRS had to go through massive changes to right. comply and, and be in conformity with the new rules and regulations. All the private tax software companies had to do the same thing. Uh, but there are about 10 states in the country that elected not to be consistent or conform with federal rules and regulations. So they decided by not passing their conformity mm -hmm. bill that they do almost every year until mm -hmm. 2018 uh, to go with the old rules, the 2017 mm -hmm. rules. So now we've got 10 states, 10 or 15 states, somewhere in that range, that are doing their tax returns at the state level under the old 2017 rules. The IRS and the rest of the country is doing everything under 2018 rules, and there's some disconnect wow. that isn't quite working right. So some of the early returns are actually having some hiccups in it right. that they're not working exactly the but way they're supposed they're to. But fix the taxpayers filing in states that are not conforming to the most current uh, uh, federal laws That's on correct. taxes. And yeah, I, I still do a lot of work with Hawaii residents right. and do Hawaii tax returns, uh, and I do a lot in California. Right. Nevada, in case people didn't know, has no state tax. <laughs> so right. there's no state tax in Nevada. Right. But you know, I do a lot of returns for California and Hawaii, both of which have elected not to be oh. conform or not to conform with the IRS. And, and when you think about uh, volume, you know, numbers, California has 35, 40 m million people. <laughs> so it's not a small drop in a bucket when you no. think about it. It's a lot of numbers when those uh, filings do appear at the IRS. And that's a very good point because the tax systems that prepare those tax returns mm. for California because it is such a large market, they right. focus on fixing them first. Oh, now, Hawaii right. is probably one right. of the smallest right. markets in right. the country, and so they're always going to be kind of at the right. tail end, uh, and that's where a lot of the hiccups are, oh, are okay. coming. So, you know, there, there might even be some surprises down the road when people have filed the return so early. Right. They uh, may find that maybe there was a glitch in there somewhere right, right. that they'll find out about later. Wow. So there's some things that we still don't know about that, that may appear uh, in the future. Well, one, one quick example, uh, and for those people that are employees that have unreimbursed employee expenses, there's a form called a 2106 that you used to have at the federal level when you filed your, your tax return and you had a Schedule A, then you had some reimbursement expenses uh, that you wanted to claim. Um, well, the IRS is, there's no more 2106. It's okay. gone. It, right. You don't use it anymore Under the on federal your, on your, your, your okay. federal return, yeah. and yeah. that's a federal form. Right. All right. But when you do a Hawaii return and you have unreimbursed employee expense you want to get your money back from, you have to attach the 2106. <laughs> Which doesn't exist. But there is no <laughs> So it, it gets a little complicated, uh -huh. and the tax software companies have to create this right. now and, and right. plug it into the state returns. But like you say, uh, for, them, uh, for the uh, private software companies to uh, create something in software for the Hawaii market, which has barely 1.54 million people, it may take a little more time. 
Absolutely, and, and even with 1.4 million people, not all of them file tax returns. <laughs> so so right. Some of them are families, right, right, some of them right. are children, or are underground right. economy. Right, 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 right. So there may only be a few hundred thousand tax. But returns. it also applies, like uh, you said before, uh, to people who file multi forms, uh, multi state. Right. They may have property and business in in several states, uh, including right. Hawaii or Nevada and and California, and two out of the three are not compliant. Right. Right. So it, it's been an interesting tax season. We knew it was going to be a right. challenge. All the tax uh, preparer professionals, the AICPA, have all talked about this is going to be one of the most complicated and wow. challenging tax seasons in history. But you, you're part of the group called the Tax Preparer Group. Yes. Uh, now you, you and your colleagues must have known this was coming. And, and we're preparing for this, uh, but the tax, uh, the people who are filers, really were not much to know about the complications. If they were reading the newspaper yeah. Yeah. or listening to the news, um, they would have known. Okay. You know, yeah. it was not a secret. Right, right, right. You know, but, you know, in fairness, there's just so much you can do to yeah. be prepared. Right. Um, you know, we knew it was going to be a problem. We knew there was going to be complications. The software upgrades were going to be complicated. We knew there was going to be a hiccup, but we weren't sure where. <laughs> okay. And so right. we were aware, we knew it was going to right. happen, and we just had to wait to see exactly where it would start popping well, up. Well, uh, and, and you're correct that in software programs, uh, if you touch one part, it, must, it may have impact on other parts that you're not aware of uh, later on. And as you get into more complicated tax returns, it becomes somewhat of a matrix calculation when you start talking about alternative minimum taxes oh, and right. what's capped out, what isn't. You know, right. I can deduct this up to this much, but not you know, at the state level, but only at the federal level. It, it becomes a real matrix calculation that there can be what I refer to as a hiccup in <laughs> right. almost any area. Now, you talked about the, uh, uh, the, the period where there was a government shutdown. How much of an impact uh, did it ha have, or do you think it's having on uh, the refunds and the uh, reviews of, of the filings that's coming in? The IRS is a very large organization, and they've got a lot of people, right. tens of thousands of people right. working yeah. for them. All over the uh, nation. Some of the areas were affected by the shutdown, some weren't. Mm -hmm. Those that were processing the refunds themselves were not affected. Oh, okay. They continued to right. process refunds okay. and get it done. The programmers right. were affected. Oh, okay. <laughs> the compliance people, the ones right. who do the audits, right. were affected. Wow. So now all of a sudden we've got a huge backlog in right. audits that oh, weren't being done because right. of that period. Right. And the programmers weren't able to continue their rewrite of the programs. Mm. Now the majority of it was probably already done, but right. they, were, they were working on yeah. the fixes, the hiccups that they knew about. That all got stalled. So, so it, it, it is an impact, but on different parts of yeah. the organization. Right. Yes. And we have to see how it all works out. But one, another big part of the impact, and I, I know we've probably got to go and break here soon, yeah. um, but another impact real quickly was that um, there was a lot of people that was getting close to retirement. A lot of that knowledge base, oh. the historical at knowledge the IRS, at, at the IRS, IRS. Yeah. They were all there, and they're going, you know, I don't want to go through this anymore. <laughs> and then there was a threat of a second shutdown, if you remember. That's right. And, and these people said, you know, I'm yeah. out of here. And so well, they lost a lot of people. Well, at that crucial point, we will be taking a short break. Thank you very much. Aloha. This is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're gonna learn a lot. You're gonna come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at three o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, 
We want to teach you about those things in our industry that you know may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Episode of Business in Hawaii. We are talking more and more about taxes and its implications from the government shutdown and uh, programming issues, software glitches, all kinds of things. But we want to go back to the area, what other areas were impacted by the shutdown and by the continuing issues with the IRS or for the tax filer? You know, when they went through tax reform, it changed the rules a lot. And so a lot of the people within the IRS needed to learn the new rules. Okay, yeah. A lot of these people were very close to retirement. Right. And that was enough to push them over the edge. <laughs> okay, right. They didn't want to have to right. learn a whole new right. set of rules and, and begin. They were comfortable with the lower rules. Right? And they had been doing <laughs> right. the old rules for 20 years. Right, right. And now all of a sudden they had a new set of rules. Right. And, and they said, all right, time out. I'm out of here. Goodbye. Right. And so they lost a lot of very seasoned right. people in the IRS. And that institutional knowledge I mentioned right. earlier, a lot of it just walked right out the door. Hmm. Uh, you know, and I forget exactly the statistics, but there's only about 2 or 3% of the entire workforce that's under 30. Wow. It's yeah. a huge yeah. older yeah. workforce that has been there for right. a long time. At the IRS. Yeah, at right. the IRS. Uh, very few young people. Hmm. And when they do go in there, they don't usually last very long, right. and so they're, they're out. And so what's happening is that a lot of the people that have got all this experience that have moved into what they call the compliance area, which is where the IRS does their audits right. and exams and reviews. And these people are seasoned, they're smart, and they have a lot of years. Uh, you know, I, I would this. agree with yeah. seasoned. <laughs> <laughs> As an as a, as a, as a elite force within the organization. Yeah. Right, you know, and there are some good sharp right. people there. I'm yeah. just being sarcastic. But you know, there, 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 there were, right. and they're leaving. Oh, wow. And so with the shutdown, that even right. convinced more yeah. people to leave. As a trigger. Yeah, and I, so yeah. it's, they've got probably the smallest workforce of examiners and auditors mm. at the IRS that they've ever had wow. before. And so audit rates are dropping, right. and in some cases dramatically. Hmm. And so there's, a, you know, that's going to have an impact on compliance issues. Right, right. And so that's a big area. Hmm. Uh, it, it, will, will the government look at this issue? Uh, is, it, is it a priority issue? Uh, I mean, uh, the government relies on taxes to pay for everything from the military to Social Security and so forth. That's true. Would that be uh, coming up as an issue I in the new future? Well, as soon as they build the wall, then they'll probably... <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I, but yes, there, it is a priority, and yeah. it has been for quite... This isn't a new issue. Right, right. The, the issue has been there for many years, and it's just gotten worse and worse, and this reform right. and government shutdown has just been a double punch to make mm. it a lot worse than well, it's it was. a perfect storm in some ways for, for the seasoned folks. But I remember in the earlier show you said that it was many, many years uh, that there was any uh, real activity in, uh, in looking at the rules again and so forth, right? I mean, it, it's not like they've been doing it every year. It, it was decades uh, before when they did a major, uh, I guess, a review of the tax rules until 2017. When I was taking my first tax class in college, right. back in the, I guess, early 80s, right, right. they were talking about tax reform. Wow. And they've been talking about tax reform yeah, yeah, yeah. all the way up until <laughs> December 2017 <laughs> when they finally actually did it. Interesting, yeah. You know, and, um, and whether it, it's, it's a good reform or not, right. you know, it depends upon, right. you know, different factors. But it, they did it. They've always had little tweaks. Right, right, you know, right. And they've always yeah. done little things here and there. And, and it was a, a, a shell game in, right, in a right. sense. And some would come and, and go. Right. And uh, But this was the first large-scale mm. tax reform uh, in 30 years. Right. So it, it, we, we shouldn't be so harsh that, you know, uh, it, it doesn't have 
such a large impact. It, it is having an impact uh, on different parts of uh, the tax world, the preparers, the filers, the, the uh, private software developers, there's states uh, that, that are not consistent with the federal law. There's many, many groups right. out there that uh, still are dealing with this. One group that we haven't talked about, Ray, is the business group. Oh, right, right. Uh, we've talked a lot about individuals, right. but you know, there's been, you know, the code was, was changed to encourage people to bring some of the offshore dollars back to the right. United States what, and yeah. have some uh, leniency as far as okay. taxes were concerned. And new investment, new jobs, new manufacturing in the U.S. Which is yeah. why we have got very high employment, very right. low unemployment, right. uh, and the economy is still going pretty right. strong because businesses did come back. They did bring some of the capital. They did make some of those investments. Uh, some c companies that were going to go to different Right. Foreign countries decided to stay and do the business here. Uh, and so it did have an impact. So it was a positive impact for the United States economy based on just that one big tax uh, rule. Yes, there was no longer an incentive. We used to have, at the corporate level, business level, one of the highest tax rates in the world. Now we're somewhere down below middle. Oh, so now there's right. no incentive. Right for U.S. companies to go to other countries. Like the Barbados, the Bahamas, to get those lower rates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because now they've got competitive rates oh, here, and so they're staying here, right, and they're right. doing the business, and they're bringing money back yeah. into the country. And that's why we like to say globally competitive. Yes. Yeah. So that is one positive, and, and, the, and, and the economy is humming along, and, and a very low un, uh, unemployment and the stock market and so forth. Well, it's been going up and down, but uh, right now it's going up. 18% yeah. yeah. in February. Yeah. It did really well. Yeah. So, so uh, that's, that's a reform that uh, it should be, uh, that, that business should take advantage of. And they have. Yeah. You know, there's been an awful lot of reinvestment. There's a lot of depreciation. Companies can make big investments in their fixed assets and write them off a lot quicker and save taxes. Yeah. You know, Ray, I, that yeah. comes to mind something right. I wanted to mention. Okay. A lot of people have this misconception that these big companies, eBay right. or Amazon, they don't pay taxes. Well, they may not pay a lot of income taxes because of all these incentives to do reinvestments. Right. I mean, Amazon is opening billion-dollar facilities, right. Right. and they get right. to oh, do yeah, that yeah. because of the quick write-offs, and it shelters a lot of that right. income. So income taxes, they don't pay. But they pay employment taxes, they pay Medicare taxes, right. FICA taxes, unemployment taxes, uh, commerce taxes, sales taxes. They pay a lot of taxes, but people just don't appreciate how much billions are being paid by these large companies in taxes. They just focus on that one component, income tax. And it, it's another one of those spin that a lot of the journalists in the media group uh, love to play with. And, and we're talking about the federal level and you know big corporations. How about for Hawaii businesses? There are uh, state unemployment taxes. Yeah. No, 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 I, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 are there advantages under the under the new tax rulings for Hawaii businesses to take advantage of? Uh, are there similar things? Or there would have been if they had made their state rules ah, in right. conformity right. with the federal. Okay. <laughs> but they didn't. Yeah, yeah. And so the answer is, generally speaking, no. Oh, okay. So we're still the outliers. All these states that you said, 10 to 15 of them, are still relying on the older tax yes, rules. that are less advantageous. What do you think will rate? happen during the next year or so? Will these states come back into the fold or still be out there, relying on the previous year? Well. Interesting question. Yeah. One reason, think of one reason why they did not go in conformity with the federal taxes. Because it was too expensive. <laughs> okay. the, the, if they had put right, right. You know, the Hawaii rules and regulations right. in conformity with the right. federal, the income tax revenue at the right. state level would have dropped. Ah. It would have been very expensive. Okay, okay. And so the question is, when will they be willing <laughs> to drop right. the tax rates okay. in Hawaii and let the ah, residents right. keep more of their right, income? Right, right, right. 
or are they more interested in increasing taxes and getting more tax revenue <laughs> yeah. to do whatever right. you, you know, I mean, we got this uh, real thing that's got to be well fixed. yeah the, that's <laughs> that's a topic we won't go into right now but that's an interesting uh, uh, it, it, so it's it's self-serving I mean, the states have their own uh, pot that they want to keep at a high level, that they don't want to lower that pot uh, if they align or, or connect or link with the federal rules. Well, if they, if they had, say, 15% less tax revenue, right. where would they cut the budget? Oh, that's a, that's a that. huge question. Yeah, you know, the DOE might be. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Could be so, a, so, so that skews uh, the you know uh, um, uh, the budget. That skews the budget for the next three years or five years. It's just uh, it'll be a whole uh, um, you know unbelievable uh, um, mess with everybody wanting to you know preserve their own uh, departments. It'd be a free for all yeah. for sure. Yeah, uh, because uh, there hasn't been any. Uh, ideas to uh, pro, uh, to accelerate other types of businesses in Hawaii to to create more the pie larger that, that we're no. going back in <laughs> you know, and, economics uh, and issue. God forbid if they ever decided to look at maybe ways of cutting their budget <laughs> that would be truly the end of the world and give more uh, to uh, for business and uh, individuals to invest in their own business or uh, lives or, or pay uh, their employees uh, more uh, yeah. or offer them more benefits right. you know very competitive environment we have for for talent right in hawaii uh it's hard to find good skilled That's right. people and you have to pay them well if you yeah. want to keep them right you know but with the tax rates as high as they are yeah. the companies can't pay the employees right. because it's all going to taxes or to cover the cost uh, and it's, it's a vicious circle. No, you're correct, because even if people say, oh, let's have a high-tech economy, well, you have to hire software engineers at yeah. Silicon Valley rates. If they, you offer 60% you know, of that, they won't come. Uh, they're, they're not they're <laughs> stupid. <laughs> they just will be in the Silicon Valley, wherever they can get their best uh, rates. Uh, right. uh, and it's uh, connected to uh, the uh, you know, uh, levels of work that they can do and contribute and so forth. You're, you're absolutely right. So we have a disconnect here, and, and uh, so it kind of goes round and round in circles. But it, you're right, it goes back to taxes. It, it, and, and the reason why there's 70 to 80,000 former Hawaii residents in Clark County and Nevada. Well, you know, I was reading an article, our uh, homeless situation has increased 14%. Right. And our population has dropped. That's right. Four percent. We're one of the very few states that are losing yes. people because the, America stands for innovation, jobs, and education. That means immigrants would love to come here, or uh, or internal migrants from California or West Coast, or wherever. But they're not coming. No. Uh, people yeah. are leaving, though. They're, they're uh, young leaving people, younger people, primarily to Arizona, right. New Mexico, and Nevada. Well, this is not a, a, a economic show, but. It's all interrelated because taxes are part of this. So why should a business like Amazon come to a place without seeing some of their taxes? Uh, you know, it's, it's not economics, yeah. and I know we're about ready to yeah. wrap up. But, but taxes can either build an economy right. or tear it down. Right. You know, and it is taxes does have a direct impact in the economy and economics. You can't separate them. You're absolutely right, and, and it's too bad we didn't get into a topic you really wanted to delve into more, retirement, but we will have another show when you come good, back, good, uh, devoted entirely on that topic, because I think that's a very, very uh, important and significant topic for residents in Hawaii. Thank you very much, Reg Baker, and this is another episode of Business in Hawaii. Your host, Ray Tsuchiyama.